All right, good to see you guys. So uh, I know we had uh, discussed uh, talking about expectations. So, uh, you know, I'm, I'll get it kicked off talking about expectations. You can branch off into however, you know, you're led to, to branch off with it. Uh, but but one of the things, especially when I, when I was talking, when concentrating on us as, you know, as, as Josh people, and we start talking about expectation, you know, and, you know, it took me back to a time, you know, years ago, it's maybe 15, 20 years ago, I was questioning the, the purpose of prayer. And, and I, I don't know if you, if, if you can catch me on this, because, it, you know, in my, in my mind, my young mind, I'm thinking, okay, you know, it seems like y'all got this. Mm -hmm. it, it seems like he got it. So what, what do I need to pray for? You know, because it's, it's, he's already got it. So I didn't, I couldn't, I couldn't, you know, really grasp the purpose of my prayer. You know, what significance with my prayer. Um, and so it was a couple of things, you know, uh, that, that y'all answered pretty strongly with me with. And it's the second thing that I'm going to mention that I want to kind of focus on. But the first thing that he mentioned to me was the authority that he gave man on earth. Mm -hmm. And, you know, there are certain laws that he works with, you know, having given authority over to Adam and all these things that he had. He works through us by his own law. And he works through our will and he works through uh, those, uh, you know, who who want him to work through. You, you get what I'm saying? And so... um you know, dealing with dealing with that, you know, that was one part of the answer. But the second part of the answer was that he's dealing with what we believe when we pray. And that that one got me because, you know, I was looking at, at myself and, and, and then I was looking at, you know, different things because oftentimes or maybe all the time when we ask somebody for something, let's say when we're kids and we ask for something from our parents, we ask for that thing or whatever it is, because we believe they have it. That we believe that they can provide it. You, you get what I'm saying? And so now, uh, you know, it, it goes to, if we believe they got it, then we're talking about faith. You know, if, if we believe they got it now, what is my expect? I have an expectation of them based upon my belief that they have something that they can give me. Y'all, yeah, y'all with me? Mm -hmm. All right. So this this goes back to the scripture. You know, faith is the substance of things hopeful. You know, the evidence of things not seen. So I said all that to say, as a people, you know, and I'm looking at this election and and you know all these things is coming up, and I. I I look at us and I say, what are we expecting from this election? You know, what are we expecting from the government? What what are we expecting? What do we think? Because we often complain about what the government's not doing or what they should do, reparations, whatever, whatever subject you want to throw in there. There's something that there's something about us that, you know, civil rights, that we believe that that's something they can give us because we ask them for. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, am I making sense? Mm -hmm. yeah. And so, you know, so it, it's it, you know, it, it's introspective for me to look at what it is that I believe that they can supply because that tells me where my faith is. Mm -hmm. Excuse me. All right, and so. I'm watching I'm watching us with this election. I'm watching all these things and we and everybody's saying we got to put Kamala in or you know, we got to put Trump in or we got to do this. And I'm I'm asking the question. I'm not saying don't vote. That ain't none of my business. I'm just saying what I, I want us to be I want us to be real about what what do we expect either way to gain from it. You know, if we say, you know, we elect her is she gonna? Is she gonna put policies in place to save us? I mean, what is it that we're expecting? Because that's gonna tell us where our faith is. And uh, so, I just wanted to, I just wanted to see what you, what you guys, uh, you know, thought about that. You know, the 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 expectation 
uh, you know, that faith is that substance of, of things hoped for, you know, the, the, or the faith is the substance of, of what we expect. Faith is the foundation of what we're expecting from Yah. But is it the foundation of what we're expecting from something other than Yah? Mm. That is a really interesting question, Ak. That that is, I think this can go pretty deep. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna kind of take an approach, if y'all don't mind me kicking it off again, Hank. <laughs> you are the kicker offer, dude. I'm, I'm the kicker offer. Huh? <laughs> um, all right, so let me let me start off by kind of give kind of setting setting it up with this. There there's a movie called The Matrix. Um, and there's a and there, the latest one, the, the latest version of it. There's a moment where we see Neo taking the blue pill that everybody else is taking that keeps them conform to whatever the programming is. Um, well, let's just go back to the very first one. Where he's given the, the opportunity to choose. So he's opportunity to choose the blue versus the red pill. Blue pill, you stay in, in the system, uh, conform to whatever image it is. Believing what it what it puts out, or take the red pill and wake up, wake up, and if you wake up, you have to be you have to brace yourself for what you might see, but you also have to prepare yourself for how to handle it. Um, so I won't go too much into the movie, but I just kind of want to set it up with that basic kind of uh, foundation for for my intro tonight. Um, so and 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 the similarity. We are conditioned in the, here in this country and in the world with its systems. We grow up in systems. We grow up in the school system. We grow up with a government system. We grow up with a medical industry. We grow up with all kinds of systems and they all program us with, with their narrative. And that narrative starts from the day we are, our eyes are open and we are conscientious and we're paying attention and, and, and it just, and we're inundated with it. Worse now than we were when I was a kid and worse than when my father was a kid. But this inundation of all this narrative and programming from the system that creates a counterfeit dependency. Uh, it creates a codependency on, on these systems. And when you're presented with the red pill to say, hey, you know, you're you're seeking a government. You're seeking an agency. You're seeking a thing of the world for help, for for relief, for salvation. Because some people call other folks their savior, who who has a certain status, who has a certain achieve a level of of, of financial achievement in this system. They think that they are the standard and that's who they should be seeking for tell us what to do. So we have been inundated with all of these different um uh I guess programming. All of this different programming over years, over generations that do not match with the with our original ancestral programming. Our ancestral programming was directly connected with the Most High and that he would speak directly to Abraham. He would speak directly to Isaac. He would speak directly to Jacob and they received true knowledge and they received the truth. So you get into the mix where our hard headedness, our stiff neckedness, our wanting to, to, to have things and we, we want to be like we have the eye wheels operating within ourselves. I want to have this. I, you know, whatever you set before the eyes, they become. You see something you want it. The lust of the eyes. You you see so you see something, or or your flesh is is desiring something. Lust of the flesh. And then you see the neighbors, you know, talking about all the things they have, and then your pride kicks up. So you start you want you want to boast too. We don't. And so being in the matrix, that's the subliminal programming that it pushes. It pushes that agenda. It pushes your disconnect from the true vine and it pushes you to the counterfeit vine of the, the blue pill. Oh, you know, I'll just ask the government year after year, election after election for the same things over and over again. And what they respond to us with is that that it's kind of a scam. 
Oh, yeah. They give us everything we want to hear that feels good, that sounds good, that 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 makes this flesh feel like, OK, well, since they look like us and they're talking this 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 good game. OK, well, I'm going to choose that. one. Well, I don't care about this, the, the, the unrighteousness and the sinful stuff and all this other stuff. I, I'm going to choose them because it just feels right. But then they get into, well, I got to choose the lesser of the two evils. Oh, uh, here we go with that with that argument. There's nothing right with choosing anything evil if you call yourself a follower of the most high. And and so we are dealing with a a, a massive deception of, of of Judah, of Israel, of Yasharel, a massive deception that that just didn't start right now. It started long ago. And it actually started in the garden. And her seed will be against his seed and his seed will bruise her heel and her seed will crush his head. It started thin. The plot started thin. So you got thousands of years of Satan plotting against the children of Yah. And he is, he, he is controlling the systems of the world because the systems of the world all pull everyone who believes in it away from Yah further and further. And if you're paying attention now, it, it's getting so bad that you can't turn the TV channel, even if you're just watching a ball game without there being a commercial with something that's that's pushing the agenda, pushing the programming and pushing the hook to get the children hooked in. In New York, there was there was this group of people uh, attacking this man being interviewed, minding his business, just having a discussion. They all said in unison uh, what they were, the lifestyle they chose to live. But they said, we're coming for your children. That was a that was a legion of demons saying that. And if you've been watching, that's what's been happening. Our children have been they they're, they're coming after them because if they can get them when they're young, they got. It. But if we as parents don't don't step in and protect them and give them Christ and give them the, the word and give them the scriptures and give them the truth when they're young and not wait until they're old and cemented up here to where. They don't want to hear it. You give it to them when they're sponges and when they can absorb it and when you can steer them in the way they should go. It's easier for them to say, no, I'm not taking the blue pill. I prefer the red pill because the blue pill is going to make me believe things that are going to kill me eventually, destroy my soul. So we have to consider that we're dealing with a, a multi-millennia year old programming that is not just surface, it's not just physical, it is spiritual. And because it's spiritual, you have to, uh, you ha we have to awaken past what we've been, what's been put before our eyes. We have to get to a point where we recognize, okay, am I gonna sit here and continue down the same pattern? It's a pattern, it's a pattern of behavior. It's a pattern of, okay, I'm gonna go and I'm gonna ask the same thing this, for these next four years. Well, you know, they had other things they, they had to work on and we didn't quite get what we wanted, but we got this, this and this. But the this, this and this is what they're telling you to say from the programming in the TV. And nobody looks into it to see actually how it's affecting us. And so it's it's a it's an ignorant uh, response. It's an ignorant pattern of, well, you know, they said they're saying they said they, they, they. And nobody, the majority never look in, look, looks into the, the, the heart of the matter to figure out exactly what's going on and what happened to us and what they really did. They always they always say, look here, but all the while there's another hand over here that they don't see going on. That's, that's what's really going on. So watch for the fruit. If the fruit doesn't match what they've told you, then why are you still believing them telling, pull it from the same playbook? We're going to fix this. We're going to fix that. We're going to fix this. Well, what I, I don't see anything being fixed. I see things getting worse. Yeah, I see so, the he, so even, even okay, so even, you know, with that, you know, let's say we identify that. And then we look, I'm, I'm saying we look internally at each, at each other, our mentality, and we're saying, you know, even, even let's say we get together and we decide, hey, it, it's a way to come out of this. It's a solution. You mm -hmm. know, we can all get together. And we can, you know, we most of the money that we spend as a people, you know, it stays just a few hours in our in our community that leaves out. You know, if if we were to come together just as a people, you know, our wealth would uh, be uh, greater than a, a lot of countries. 
in the world, you know, just, and we said, well, if we get together and start our own business and do our own things and all this, you know, going back to expectation, is that a legitimate solution to our problem? In, in my mind, it, it is a solution that mirrors what the world says you, you're supposed to pursue in order to have the life that they put in front of you. Um, our solutions should always start with the Most High because he tells us to seek him first. Seek first the kingdom of Yah and his righteousness and all these things shall be added to you. But the thing is, we're confused what all these things are because, again, the system has told us these things are the opposite of what Yah says these, these things are. We're told there's this stuff. We're told it's, it's, a, it's, it's money, it's cars, it's houses, it's clothes, it's gold, platinum, et cetera, et cetera. So it is a solution and it may very well work for a time, but you have to ask this question. Are you, in that scenario, are you serving Yah or are you serving Mammon? Yeah. What are you I'm, doing? Yeah, what what you know, and, and so that's what I'm trying to trying to delve into because any solution without Yah, without without doing it the way Yah want us to do it, you know, and and we had to examine what what am I believing in this situation? Who, who am I believing can provide me with what I need? And so then if we start saying it's the collective, we can get together as the collective and provide ourselves everything we need, then we're that's right back at, at the Tower of Babel. That's ne exactly. That's never worked. It, it, yeah. it's, ne it's never worked. Um, you know, because it's the wrong spirit. You know, it's, it, you, know, it, it, you know, we put ourselves under the authority and guidance of a whole other spirit. You know, right. and, you know he said he's not, he's not giving a spirit of fear, but one of power, love, and sound, sound mind. And so, uh, you know, so I'm really just looking at how we think, what we're expecting to pull us out of the situation, mm -hmm. uh, you know, that, that we're in, you know. So that, that, that's kind of, you know, why I want to look at this, you know, you know, however you guys want to, you know, you know, talk about it. But I was just kind of looking at it, you know, it, just so many things came to mind, civil rights which we're losing you know but even if we got it how would that what would that do for us uh you know as y'all as people and 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 applying it to the promises that he gave us in scripture on what we need to do in order to to acquire the other things like you were saying seek you first the kingdom uh, you know and his rights so it's a it's that we our thinking is so antithetical to the way y'all want us to think. Yeah. Can you imagine when the system crashes, the banks stop working, the money stops flowing, they pull the okie doke and there's a whole nother type of currency that they've, when I say they, uh, I'm talking about that 1% that controls everything. They shift a whole different currency and you have all the, you have the remaining of the, um, of the people that have built this dependency on on this on on this 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 worldly thing that's going to pass away that will not last forever that loses value that will not sustain you because when it comes down to losing it would you rather lose it and gain the most high or would you rather keep it and lose the most high mm. because it's it's a mammon it's it's a it's a it's a Mammon versus the Holy Spirit. It's a mammon versus Yah type of situation. It is because everything that the world revolves around is money. You know, we've heard money talks. We've heard, um, you know, old uh, old, old uh, gangsters and stuff used to say cash is king. You know, that is the driving force of the majority of what goes on, on of the world in the world is keeping money, making more of it, doing whatever they have to do to get it. And then stepping on everybody and doing whatever whatever they feel they 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 could their money allows them to do to get it. So none of that speaks to righteousness. None of that speaks to doing uh, the fruits of the spirit. None of that speaks to doing what is right by 
your, your brother and sister and loving your neighbor as yourself. It speaks to the other entities that are counterfeit and opposed to the most high. Whereas if you seek the most high, he'll provide your needs. Now, granted, many of us have, have work careers because that's that has been the mechanism by which we have been taught to take care of ourselves and families. But we have to understand that there is a level of humility we got to maintain in this to where we don't get sucked into doing any, almost any and everything to move up that corporate ladder and make more and more money because you lose more and more of your soul when you start allowing mammon to shift in, in your, your thinking and shift where your heart is to pursue it by any means necessary. Well, why don't we shift and pursue the most high by any means necessary? We weren't taught that. We weren't, we were taught, get, go to, go to school, go to church, get a job, pay your bills. We were taught that those, those, those principles from this, from the system. We weren't taught to think critically and question everything, read the scriptures, study the scriptures, do the word study. We weren't taught that we had to learn to do those things after some time. I'm thankful that y'all woke us up to be able to, to navigate in these times with, with an awakened soul in mind. But you got to think about all everybody else who refuses to let go of what makes them comfortable. How often was Paul uncomfortable? How often was were, were, were the apostles uncomfortable? How often was, was Christ uncomfortable? We're not willing to be uncomfortable. We so want so if we, if we're not willing to be uncomfortable, then it, or what are we saying then? It, it, you know, if, if we're not willing to go there on our own, will y'all not have to create the conditions to get us there? You get what you get what I'm, what I'm saying, and so you know, and all you know, are we ready for that? You know, because that's what scripture says is going to happen. You know, uh, we're not going to do it on our own. That's 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 uh, for most of us are not. And so, um, you know, I just, you know, I wanted to bring this thought process of about expectation, what we're expecting, you know, why we're expecting it. Why do we have faith in other things other than y'all? You know, what's the ramifications of that? What's the result of that? You know, and what does he have to do? Because if if we don't if we don't do that, what circumstances does he he have to create to push us into that mindset? Yeah, you yeah. know th th this is this is a rich topic, rich topic, and uh, and um, I've got just listening to you, you know you distinguished gentlemen talk. I, I've got so many thoughts now that are all racing to the exit, trying to get out of my mouth, and so hopefully what I'm going to say is going to make some sense. But you know, like like you, Kendall. I went through this period where I was like, why, why, why do I even pray? I mean, why, why should I even try? Because at the, at the end of the day, at the beginning of the day and all points in between, father, you going to do what you want to do. You're sovereign. There's nobody more powerful than you. There's nobody that can stop you from doing, uh, you know, doing yes. If yes, is what you want to do. There's no one that's going to stop you from doing no. If no is what you want to do, so what? What is it? What is it that you would have me to pray for? I remember this, and this, and this, it's not been too too long ago. Too long ago, I went through this this period, and and uh, <clears throat> and he, he, like you, he challenged me in my faith. Now, with that said, I think it it it, it goes. You know, you know, I, I probably need to talk about what faith means to me. Because uh, I went through this period of time from about 20, 2010, no, 1999, 98, somewhere around there, uh, to about 2010, 2011, where I was in a lot of what we call uh, charismatic churches, word of faith churches, um, faith churches. And, um, and there's a lot of nonsense in there. You know, you, you, you've heard it, you know, name it, claim it. You can have what you what you ask for. All you gotta do is go lay your hands on it and 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 and, and name it and and boss boss the most high around and tell him what you want. And he he will yield to you know your wishes and give you exactly what you want. You know I I you know I, there was a period of my life where um, I believed that 
and uh, participated in that to some degree, but with always a, an appropriate amount of skepticism. Uh, particularly, you know, my skepticism usually rose when I started reading my, my Bible for myself and stopped just listening to the, the people preach the message. Uh, I, I, I began to become more skeptical. And then life happened. Life happened. You know, I was doing well in life, <clears throat> had everything, you know, of... Uh, you know, that a, a family could desire. We weren't in need of anything. Nice house, nice cars. It had status and all that stuff, and life happened. And then uh, <clears throat> I started asking the most high some different questions. And what what he what he helped me to realize was that my faith was was it was founded in the lust of my flesh, the lust of my eyes, and the pride of life. You know, my, my faith was founded in things that I wanted, uh, things that I saw other people having and things that, you know, I claim for myself. And and, and, I, and and it's true that he has, he can do whatever he wants to do, but it's also true that he is good. It is also true that he has chosen us. It's also true that he uh, nobody can hinder him in anything and everything he wants to do. So when I pray now, rather than asking him um, for what I want that I know he can give, my responsibility is to ask him for what he wants. That's the proper demonstration of my faith, just to know and expect, okay, he has everything that he wants us to have. He knows everything everything that he wants us to have. And he's manifesting himself from the beginning of time in every way that we possibly would need him on this earth. And so what I have to do is look at my situation that I've, I've been in, that I'm in, I'm going through, and then say, okay, Father, how have you manifested yourself regarding this situation? What is it that you want out of this situation, what is it that you, you know, ex you're expressing yourself through this manifestation that you would have me to plug into you and to lean into you and depend upon you and not to my own understanding? And, and when I when I do that, he's taught me that's what faith is. Are you willing to ask me for what I want from you as opposed to what you want for yourself? And so we live in this world where um <clears throat> And I, I really appreciated what you said, uh, Dante, um, about you know this this you know um, God and man. You know, you, you who said himself, you can't serve two masters. You're gonna love one and hate the other. And so we live in this world fueled by our own lusts. That and, and and we we have one of two gods to go to. We can go to one god who may open the door or we may not, or we can go to another God who will have us chasing pipe dreams and wild things and waterfalls, trying to get what he can give in terms of money and status and all those things. And so we, we find, I found myself at a crossroads. Am I going to keep going down this path towards this God, you know, chasing things, chasing money that I, our, the, the, the world in which we live in says you can have it all. <laughs> the churches that I was going to said you can have it all. Or am I going to go to this other direction towards a, a God who says it is I who opens and closes doors. And you, you know, before you even come to me, I know what you have need of. And I'm a good God. And, and, I, and if you ask me for bread, I'm not going to give you a stone. I'm only going to give you good. And, I, and it was later that I learned, not only, I, you know, I didn't even realize the depth that he, lo lo he, he loved me until I realized, hey, he chose me. I am one of his chosen ones. He elected me and put me inside and said, I am, if you, if you, if you do what I tell you to do in terms of my commandments, and 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 follow me and, and and make me first in your life and choose to chase after those things that I want you to chase after from my point of view, then what I'll do is make you the apple of my eye. I'll call you one of my treasured ones. You'll be a peculiar people in all the all the land. And so that's the, I think that's what we're facing right now to some degree. You know, we we've got these lusts that we're dealing with. 
and then these lust, you know, the, and then we got these people who you know were presented, you know, put before us in the terms of politicians. I can give you whatever you want to have, and we choose that instead of choosing the one who is the Elohim of 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 all things, heaven and earth. And he knows how the doors are going to close and open. He knows which ones are going to close and open to get to the you know the ends that he desires. And are we going to trust him and know that wherever he we end up with him, we're going to be in a good place. Yeah, I, I, I appreciate the 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 the, um, the thought on on faith, you know, because it it, it I mean, so we when we when we talk about faith, and we and we and we and we line it up with scripture. And, and you know everything we got to do, we got to line up with, with scripture. You know, and number one, he says he gives every man a measure, measure so, a measure of it. So mm -hmm. it, whatever faith we start off with comes directly from him. Yeah, we can't take credit for it. So he he let he lets us know that. Then he says, faith comes by hearing. Well, what hearing? He said that hearing is by the word of our Elohim. So when we start talking about faith or what we believe to believe in what Yah said is basically what 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 faith he has to say it we have to believe in it right so by him saying something and us believing it it puts the it puts the definition of faith not in what I want mm -hmm. but in what he said. Mm -hmm. You know, I know the thoughts he said to us that I have for you. Right. Uh, you know, the thoughts of good and not evil to bring you to an expected end. Yep. And, and, and I'm, I'm giving you my plan. I'm showing you my plan. And so your faith has to be about my plan and not about naming and claiming. Mm -hmm. You get what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Is my plan working in you? And not your plan, mm -hmm. and I and I, I just I, I really appreciated that uh, you know that that uh, that thought when you when you start talking about the, mm -hmm. the faith, yeah. And and and, and will you uh, believe that I am who I am in the execution of my plan? You know, we we got options everywhere. <clears throat> you know, the the God of Mammon is going to ensure <laughs> that we've got options. To pursue, and to what extent do we exactly? It, how far do we go in, in our? But see that that's a you know, the, uh, and I hope I didn't cut you off. Did, no, no. Have, so, how far do we believe him? You know, that's a, that's a question because we're we're encountering all of this these disasters now, and it's going to continue to get worse. We're going to see more uh, hurricanes. We're going to see more flooding. We're going to see earthquakes and stuff start to happen. We're going to see things ramping up. Things are not going to go like we expect them to go. Mm -hmm. Our economic situations are not going to go like we think they're going to go. You know, the country is not going to all of a sudden begin to prosper again because we got new leadership. It's not going to go right. in the direction that we think. And can I trust him? even when things are not going the way I want them to go. See, this is the faith that he, he, he wants to get us to, you know, he started talking about the, the, the three Hebrew boys. What, what's going to happen when we get put in the fire? Mm -hmm. That's an interesting question. I, can I trust him even when things don't go the way I want them mm -hmm. to go? We, we've been taught to put our faith in things that, that don't amount to much of anything other than something that's going to pass away. You know, think about that. You know, trust, trust the government, trust, you know, I'm no disrespect to anybody's parents, but trust mom and dad. You're supposed to be able to trust your mom and dad. Um, fortunately, many of us can, but some can't. But we're trusting the things, everything but Yah. And we're trusting everything but the word of Yah. We're trusting everything but the prophecies that are fulfilling that Yah foretold. We're trusting everything. And, and so what happens when the faith that we think we have is it, it's built on a foundation that's not secure. Hmm. Yeah. What happens? Yeah. What happens? You know, and you know, I, I even look at it in the microcosm perspective. And I and I and, and y'all had me look at my wife. 
And I remember becoming angry with my wife because she wasn't doing something that I had imagined that she Mm should do. And he asked me the question, did she give you the indication that that's who she was? Or is that what your imagination of her was? Mm-hmm. Y'all get what I'm saying? And so I had to come to the conclusion that these were my own imaginations. She mm-hmm. didn't lie to me about that. I lied to me about that. Right. And so I'm responsible for creating the imaginations in my own mind. You know, and so we often get mad at people because they don't meet our expectations of who we said they were. Mm-hmm. When they never told us that they were that to begin with, right? And right. Uh, you know, and I, I and I use that as a microcosm because that's how we do, yeah. Yep, exactly. I was just thinking it up. Yeah, so we we put all of these expect you know expectation on him that he didn't promise mm-hmm. the path that he didn't promise that we would go the the course of action that he he didn't say he would take. Mm-hmm. And then when it don't go like we think it all to go, we're mad at him. Yeah. For our own imagination. I, I remember um, speaking with this this woman many many years ago. She and I went to church together, and and she we also uh, worked. We were also in the same organization. I was in the military at the time, and um, she. I remember she, I hadn't seen her in in church for several weeks. So I stopped by her office and was talking to her and, and she was telling me about how disappointed and disenfranchised she had become with God and church. You know, you know, she was listening to all these name and claim it messages and she was naming and claiming everything that she could name and claim, uh, following the prescription uh, that had been given to her. And and you know, she had, I don't know, she had told me how much money she had given, and it was quite a bit. And um, and she, you know, she was uh she was struggling now, and she was wondering why why things hadn't worked according to the prescription. And it was because of what you just said. You know, we're we're asking things from a point not of what he has said, but what we have told ourselves or what has been told to us. I'm guilty of it. I've done it. I've done it. And I've gone back and, you know, and, and and thought I was supposed to have X. And not only did I not get X, I didn't get Y or Z. I didn't get anything. And I'm, you know, pointing my fingers at him, wanting to know why did you not do what you said you was going to do? And he comes back and says, when did I tell you I was going to do that? That's, 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 that's the point. And, you know, is did y'all tell us that that's what he would do for us? And, similar to both of you and probably others, I am guilty of, of seeking everything but Yah. Am I, you know, I've, I've made the mistakes of listening to the person on the mic, name it, claim it. I'm guilty of, of robbing Peter to pay Paul to have to look a certain way amongst this group of people over here in this religious denomination. Hmm. You know, I'm, 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 I'm guilty of, of making those mistakes, <clears throat> but I also, had to suffer the consequences too. Um, because what I what I realized is my faith, I knew the scripture about faith. I thought I understood what faith was and is, but I put my faith in all the wrong places. And so just like uh, uh, Kendall was saying a minute ago, in my imagination, my faith was big faith. You know, I... I, my, in my imagination, I, you know, ask the most high for anything I want. But that's the problem. It was what I wanted. It was what my flesh wanted. It's what my eyes wanted, what I thought I wanted. Didn't have the understanding of it has to be what the most high wants for me. Mm-hmm. I have to be okay and be fine and at peace with your will be done in earth as in the heavens. Bless me today with my daily bread, right. with, your, with your provisions. I have to be fine with that because that's how Yahusha taught us to pray. Mm-hmm. We have to seek the most high for what he wants for us. And, and, and you know, there's, there's so many applications to that too. Mm-hmm. Uh, you know, you know, I, you know, I've, 
I, you know, I've I've gotten upset with him because I, I didn't get the material thing or the status uh, that I thought he told me. But it, you know, there have been times where um, when I started reading my my scriptures and I started asking tough questions of the people who were saying things from the pulpit, asking, "Hey, reconcile! Help me understand." How do you reconcile what you said at this point in the sermon with this scripture right here? And uh, and, uh, and there was something inside of me that thought, okay, if I went and told the truth, it would it would cause some type of conviction, and and, and people would just start repenting. <laughs> Man, I got kicked out so many places. Now, when you're dealing with pride. <laughs> got, I've got yep. kicked out of so many places um, and had some pretty tough stuff said to me because I was simply asking a question. How does this, how is this jive with scripture? Because I don't see it. Yeah, I mean, it, it's real. It's, I, mean, it, I can remember having discussions like, I'm, a, I'm just giving you an example. You, you, you've often heard, everybody's heard this. That, that you know, and they said that God would not put on you anything mm -hmm. that you yep. can't bear. Yeah, you know, oftentimes when you're going through what you're going through, mm -hmm. right? And finally, you know, you get to the point you say, Well, you know, that ain't in scripture. <laughs> All right, now, you know, I'm pretty sure somebody listening at this moment to say, Well, I know, I know that's in scripture, Lord said, He ain't gonna, he ain't gonna put you, uh, put, put nothing on you that you, you can't bear, but that's not what he said. They got the finger on the button right now, getting ready to click this thing off. Yeah, they're gonna <laughs> click it off. What he said was that there has no temptation taking mm -hmm. you, but such as is common to man. But I, Elohim, God is faithful, who would not suffer you to be tempted above that you are able. But will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. Now he's talking about temptation. Mm -hmm. But life itself is more than we can bear. Yes. <laughs> that's that's a different conversation. The only difference is. Completely and so different. that's why he says stuff to us like. You know, if you're strong, you're going to become weak because I can't work with you because you're too strong in yourself. But if you become weak, then I'll make you strong. In other words, you have, you and I have to admit that we're weak, mm -hmm. that we don't have the strength in and of ourselves. We can't bear this on our own and trust him that he will bear us up and make us strong. Mm -hmm. And so I'm just saying these concepts that we 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 you know we we have that are or or scriptural sayings supposed scriptural sayings that we have that are not there, mm -hmm. yeah. and we create this our whole notion, belief this system. This notion of being weak—that's really where the journey of faith starts. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you we know, create a new system, like you just said. We create our own, we, we create our own matrix inside of the matrix. If, if that makes sense, you know. <laughs> It's 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 uh, our imaginations. It, it it's it's so important that we learn how to cast them down and bring them to in, into subjection uh, to the Most High. It's, it's that's really important because, like you all, like you Hank, I found myself in in, in my past or in the past when hit a low hit that low point where my pride, my my lust of my eyes and lust of my flesh were so full of themselves that I could not fathom why I didn't have all those things that I was just beating heaven's door down for all the material stuff. And so the most I humbled me. He humbled me by allowing me to. Mm -hmm. And when I finally got to a point where I stopped being distracted by stuff and just looked around and paid attention to what am I doing? It is obvious now that none of this that I've been praying about the stuff prayers matters to the most high. It is obvious that money does not matter to the most high. 
Where is my heart? Who have I given my heart to? What have I given my, my heart and my mind and my soul to? What am I pursuing? And so it took a humbling of losing everything. After, you know, trying every, every prescription that was given through every microphone, trying every prescription, but the right, but the only one that matters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so, I, so in trying all the prescriptions, just like trying all these other pharmaceutical mm -hmm. side effects, side effect. <laughs> the side effect I got was humbling. Yeah. Yeah. Man, I got so many Ishmael's. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Do it doing my own thing, thinking I'm doing Yah's will. Yeah. Because he didn't move quick enough. Right. You know, he yeah. I heard the promise, but I don't see the promise. So maybe I'm supposed to do this thing. And maybe I'm supposed to do that thing. And so I end up doing the thing with Hagar and we create Ishmael's all yeah. over the place mm -hmm. because I didn't understand that I needed to wait on the promise mm -hmm. yeah. and that my purpose while I was waiting, like you were saying, is to put him first, mm -hmm. give him the preeminence and everything. And then he's going to fulfill uh, the promise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, but yeah, I'm with you guys. It, it's a, uh, it's a humbling thing. Um, it's humbling to experience I mean, not just the short span, but long stuff. Mm -hmm. Not not just a few months. Come my like years. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. And that's that's another problem that we have because you know we, you know we when we talked about this a few weeks ago, you know our twenty four hours <laughs> is a thousand years to him. <laughs> so. <clears throat> And so we uh, are not our 24 hours. Uh, yeah, a day is a thousand years. A thousand years is 24 yeah, and so, hours. Um, and so, you know, we, we, we think, you know, we read the scripture, you know, you know, weeping may endure for a moment, but joy comes in the morning. And, and you know, when we're coming from his perspective, it, it, it may not happen as quick as we're thinking. One of my favorite scriptures um, and I, I, I learned to pray this a few years ago uh, it's in James, where it talks about if anyone lacks wisdom, you know, let him ask of Yah and he will give liberally and without reproach. And to my knowledge, gentlemen, you all correct me if I'm wrong, if I'm missing something. But is there anything else in scripture where he says he will give it to you without holding back? That's a great question. I, I can't think of one. Yeah, I can't think of one. Every, the thought, the scriptures I can think of, all all say he'll give it freely. Uh, even when wisdom, even when Solomon asked for wisdom, you know, Yah was so impressed, I guess, for lack of better words, with with Solomon, that not only did he make him so extremely wise, <clears throat> he made him extremely wealthy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he puts it in a different way in the in the in the in the gospels where he says, but you know when he starts talking about who who wouldn't if their son asked for uh you know uh, you know bread would he give him you know he names all these other opposite things give him the serpent or all these type things, and he says you know so he was saying then I, I would liberally give you the you know the holy spirit he in one one part of the text he said he he specifically he's talking about the spirit well wisdom is part of that spirit. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so he was saying the same thing as yeah, he was saying with, as far with, as I know, yeah. yeah that's the only thing where if you ask him you ain't gonna be able to contain what he gives to you if you mm -hmm. if you ask it sin sincerely and so when i when i realized that it caused me to start asking a question what is it about wisdom that causes them to say, if you ask this of me, out of all the things that you can ask for, if you ask this of me, I will give it to you and I won't hold it back. You know, press down, shaking together and run it over. He'll give it to you. <laughs> not money, <laughs> not cars, not houses, wit, but wisdom. And so my simple country definition of wisdom is just his point of view. If you ask me for my point of view, and you seek me for my point of view, 
If you pursue me from, from my point of view, I will give it to you liberally and will not hold back. And I think that's the challenge you know, that we're facing uh, in life is that we don't have his point of view. We're asking for things that uh, he has not asked us to ask for. We're asking for things he didn't tell us to expect. We're asking for things that he can get it to us, but it's not the things he would want us to have. You know, yeah, when, yeah, does he want us to have a house, a mansion? Yeah, he does. He says, when I come back, I'm going, I'm going to prepare a place for you so that where I go, there are many mansions there. So he wants us to have a mansion, but he doesn't want us to have those things at the expense of bringing him down. And so we, he, he, we, we, I had to learn how to align my point of view where I started asking him, like, Father, how do you see this? What is it about this thing uh, that you would have me to know about it? And how would it impact me if I had it or if I don't? And regardless of you know what I got clarity on the answer right now, I'm going to trust you that you know what I have need of and everything that you want me to have. You have the ability to get it to me. Yeah, I mean, so then you look at, based on what you're saying, so you look at wisdom and you look at David. Right. <laughs> and then you and, and you and and you just look at what David says, the things he's been through, the mistakes he's made, all of the things. And he prophesies and says, his his wisdom took him to a place and said, I'm trusting you that you won't leave my soul in hell. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This it was mm. or allow your holy one to see corruption. So this man's wisdom had grown to the point where it was beyond the circumstances that he was gonna have to go through to get to the promise. Mm. <laughs> yeah, and so he was saying, I know based upon the knowledge and the wisdom that you have given me that there's a course that I got to go. I got to wait on you. I'm going to die before you get here. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go to the lower parts of the earth, but I'm going to trust you. Mm -hmm. Even into mm -hmm. death. <laughs> and with the knowledge that I'm going to the lower parts of the earth, I'm going to trust well, look you. At all, look at all that foreshadowing of, of our Messiah. <laughs> Oh, you get what I'm saying? And he said, but yeah. I, I believe you're going to do what you're going to do. And that at some point you're going to, you're not going to leave me there. And I know you're going to come down there with me at some point. And I'm trusting that you're not going to see any corruption so that when you get up, I'm going to get up with you. And so he, he he's seeing a point of view of life on earth. Y'all's point of view for life on earth. You're, you're down here for this purpose, this reason. And, and you're down there, and this is going to happen to you. <laughs> but no matter how bad it gets, I'm coming to get you. I ain't going to leave you there. <laughs> Come on now. I mean, that, and that's where he's trying to get us to, you know, and that's when we look at the floods, we look at all the things that are going on on earth, and we look at all these things, and we, and we look at the perspective of the three Hebrew boys who was in the furnace, who was in the fire. And they they made the statement that you know he's able to deliver us from this situation. It's not it's not even you know a doubt about that. But if he decides that's not the course of action that he wants to take at this moment, we still trust him. That's a that's another level of trusting. Yeah, because in our limited minds, we think that faith. It, all the way to the grave. We we think we, we just have to have faith to the grave. But we see David and all them having faith through the grave. Yep. That makes sense. What I'm so, really um, yeah. So I, I see us having to trust him. Uh, you know, just like Yeshua trusted the Father, even unto, even unto death, even unto yeah. death, even yeah. unto death. Even unto death, mm -hmm. and and that's where we're headed. As the the world is headed, mm -hmm. and I I see a false hope in government. We, I see a false hope. Yeah, we, we don't, don't want to die. die. We don't want to die. Yeah, 
and the, and I see a false hope. I was I was uh, somebody sent me a clip earlier. Either somebody sent it to me, I ran across. It. I can't remember, but it was a young man. He was in. Uh, he was on on that uh, talk show. Oh, I forgot the guy's name now, but he was on the uh, talk show. And he was calling from Tampa. And he was in tears because he was saying the government didn't help us. The government's not doing anything for us, you know. And uh, he he was upset, and everybody was mad at the government because mm -hmm. the government, you know, they couldn't get the funding they needed. They 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 applied for the seven hundred fifty dollars, couldn't get it. They were rejected, and and the government has failed us. And they're going through all of those things. And I understand it. I'm not demeaning that, but I'm just saying. What if what if I'm there? What if the storm is where I am, and it looks like I'm not gonna make it out of it? Do I still trust him, mm -hmm. even unto death? Even unto death. That's the faith. That's the faith he requires of us. Mm -hmm. If you really want to kind of just say it, you know. Mm -hmm. But are we willing? Are are we willing to embrace? fully that level of faith. Mm -hmm. Now, I, I trust that we do. I'm teaching my children to have that kind of faith because when Yah awakened us, he showed me and my wife the significance of, of if you live for Christ, you have to remember what that means. It's not just living in, in this life, but it is also being willing to give up this life for him, which could mean death and being okay with it. Being okay. That's the, that's the thing. Being okay with it. Yeah. And that's a level of, uh, you know, the growth, you know, you know, I, I, you know, we think we're there sometimes, you know, but you know, anybody can get shook. You know, anybody can get shook. You know, after I, 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 all David did, uh, you know, you know, he went through his life. He was fighting giants, and you know, he, you know, he, you know, he would go into wars. It was one time that you know he went out and fought one war, and he came back to the camp. I think, uh, you know, uh, what, what was it? Giglag, Ziglag, I believe it was, and they had took his family. Not only had they took his family, but they had took the families of the soldiers that were with him. And the soldiers got mad at him. They almost turned on. They really, you know, uh, turned their backs on David. And David put on the ephod, went to the Most High and said, should I pursue? It, 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 he asked a simple question. And Most High said, yes, pursue. David didn't care who rode with him or if anybody rode with him. David mounted up on that horse. He said, I'm going to get what's mine because Yah told me to pursue. And so when you read it in certain uh, scripts, the armies of heaven was above him yeah you know, while he was riding he was he, he was by himself but he wasn't by himself and so he was determined to do uh you know what he was supposed to do and and, and the scriptures said that he was riding so hard that many of the men that were riding with him fell off they tried to follow him but they fell off because he was riding so hard and he went back and he took everything you know, that belonged to him. That's how much faith that, that he had uh, in Yah. But then, fast forward several years, he's sitting on his throne. He has subdued a lot of the kingdom. He's there, you know. Uh, and the, the, it said that Satan himself rose up against mm -hmm. David. And it shook him. And he told his man to go out there and count how many people we got. <laughs> he, had, he had never done that before because, you know, going back to the previous example, he was willing to ride by himself hearing what y'all said. Now he's, 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 he's at a point where he was a bit more comfortable. And Satan himself rose up and he shook him mm -hmm. and he, he started counting. And then they ended up bringing, you know, y'all gave him three choices on what do you want to happen here, mm -hmm. you know, but I'm just saying we can all get shook, you know, 
And so um of course not to cut you off, but you know, but are we willing to admit that? Right. Because you know, super being super Christian full of faith, we we can't we can't admit stuff like that. You know, I'm I'm thinking about the you know the the, the man who had a, a son in scripture. You know, son was getting you know sick, beat down by the devil or whatever, and he he you know Yahushua comes passing by and he says. If you can, I know that you can heal, heal him. You should turn back and says, well, if you can believe, if you can believe all things are possible. And the man says, I believe, but help me in my unbelief. And I believe, you know, Yahushua helped him, not because he said, I believe, but he said, help me in this area where I have unbelief still, that, in, that you know about it. You challenge me about my unbelief. And so help me in that. And I believe he responded. And anyway, so we've got to be willing um, and humble enough, you know, to say, okay, I'm, I'm, I've got some areas of doubt in me. I've got some areas where I'm really, I'm, I'm absolutely convinced that, you know, that the most high has got my back, but there are some areas where, you know, and, and, and for me, those areas, you know, the, they're areas of my pride. They're, they're, they're areas of my flesh. That you know that feel good to me, <laughs> you know, and I, I enjoy them, and I don't want to give them up, and so I choose now. I mean, you know, I'm, I'm by not giving them up, I'm choosing to believe or not believe that His grace is sufficient for me, and so I've got to be willing to release those to Him and say, Father, in this area, I believe You. I do believe that You're all powerful. I do believe that You love me. I do believe that you know who I am. I do believe that you you incline yourself to me. You, you your face is is facing me. Your ear is towards me. I do believe that you're listening to me. But Father, uh, I, I I've got some unbelief there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's powerful. And then then too to add to that. So that's a, that's a scenario. And it and it's, it's everything's not just one scenario. Uh, you know, you know you can believe Yah on a grand scale. But you can also see what Yah is allowing to happen. Right, right, right. right. All right. So, and what what do I mean by it? so when we look at when we look at Elijah, Elijah is fighting the prophets of Baal. He he got great faith in what Yah is going to do. I mean, he puts water down in the trough and everything. Challenges, <laughs> you know, uh, challenges. I think it was it three hundred prophets of Baal, eight hundred. I can't remember, but. It was a lot of them. And he ends up killing all those prophets of, 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 of Baal. You know, Jezebel's men. Mm. All right. Now, to put the second criteria to that, Elijah had also watched Jezebel kill many of his brethren mm -hmm. who were also faithful men of Yah. So he's watching Yah work powerfully in him to destroy the prophets of Baal. But at the same time, he's watching other powerful men of Yah being destroyed. Right. It's kind of it's, it's kind of like when when the when the when the disciples, mm -hmm. I think they saw James get mm -hmm. killed. That, that was shocking to the church. Mm -hmm. So you, you don't know what Yah is going to allow. And so after he had de de destroyed the prophets of Baal, Jezebel stood up, the one who had had permission to destroy some of the other prophets. She said, "By tomorrow, by this time, you're gonna be dead." Yep, dude was shook. He was shook, <laughs> and he took off running. Oh, because super Christianity says you can't be sick, you can't be lacking for anything. You always got to have a a. a, a a wad full of money in your pocket, super Christianity, <laughs> and, and, and 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 that ain't that ain't what that ain't what oh that's not what he experienced. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not you know uh, you know, and so you know Yeshua challenges us with those thoughts when he starts he's you know when 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 one of the people came up to him you know you know we get boastful sometimes like you know I want to follow you where wherever you go I want to do you know that sounds good. Mm -hmm. It's it's hyper spiritual. Uh, wherever you go, Lord, that's where I'm going. And 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 so, you know, he said, uh, you know, the foxes have uh, holes. <laughs> mm -hmm. You're like, wait, wait, hey, I just told you I'm gonna follow you wherever you go. You talking about 
foxes is having holes and, 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 and you know, and, and other animals having places to live in. He said, but the son of man has no place to lay mm -hmm. his head. And so what he's saying is, listen, if you follow me, there's going to be some circumstances that you're going to be worse off mm -hmm. than even the animals' comforts that I have created for them. Mm -hmm. and, and to get you started on your journey, go sell everything to have <laughs> <and> poor. <laughs> there it is. <laughs> here, here, come, here comes the break. Yeah. <laughs> right. Hold up. Hold up. <laughs> Hold up, wait a minute. Let's let's take this back to the top. Um, holding. Uh, <clears throat> you know, I started out was in the military, and for me, it just didn't matter. Because, uh, you know, when it, voting for me was all about just voting for who the president was. And I, it didn't matter to me who the president was, because... No matter who the president was, he was going to be my commander in chief. And I was going to have to respond to them no matter what. So I didn't really care. I was, you know, I was what you know they called a disinterested voter. And uh, <clears throat> you know, I, I moved away from that. I established you know some positions, and for a few years I voted, and now I find myself again a, a disinterested voter. Because <clears throat> when it comes to what the most high said is going to happen. It doesn't matter who's in the office. If I have any interest, my interest might only be how is he going to use one person or the other to bring about his judgment? That's so, the question. Yeah. What, what do we do? You know, do we? I was on a call this weekend and some with some brothers and some sisters, and it was supposed to be a kind of a spiritual development call. You know you know, collaborating and you know, discussing and just kind of encouraging each other. But it ended up being a conversation about what we got to do to go vote. And I'm like, man, why I'm on this, why I'm on this call, listening to this, do we not know the season that we're in? Do we not know that judgment is in place? And, and no matter who's in there, this judgment is going to happen. So what should we really be talking about? Should I really be, and I'm, this is just me. I'm not saying anybody should or should not vote. I really don't care whether you, you do or not. It's, like you say, it's not my business. But <clears throat> how should I be handling this? How should I be thinking about this in this season where uh, this election season? Yeah, I mean, that's that's it's an important question because it's not whether or not you vote to me. It's why you vote. Mm -hmm. What what are you expecting out of it? That go back to that faith question that we asked, asked you know, uh, at the beginning. And so I'm I'm sitting here and I'm looking at the spirit of the country. Mm -hmm. this is this is this is me you know and i'm not saying that in order for y'all to get everything done that he need to get done that he don't persuade some to move one way and vote and, and others to move another way because he said i put kings up and i bring king down so he may tell somebody to, to go vote and, and, and this person not to vote i don't know it doesn't matter mm -hmm. but i'm more concerned w with the spiritual aspect of it that we're not spiritually astute to what's going on right we've seen we've seen eurocentric, eurocentric christianity promote some of the vilest things during right. the season and they've upheld all of this and still hadn't hit a bottom yet hadn't hit a bottom and so you know, it takes me back. You know, I you know how I am. I get into the Spanish Inquisition, and 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 these same so-called Christians were just doing the vilest of things. There. So we hadn't got to that level yet, but that tells me we can because I see the spirit that's 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 at work. And so I'm looking at everything that's happening. I'm saying, okay, we have one candidate who's who's a a white supremacist. You know, he's he's been the last few weeks going around talking about eugenics. Mm -hmm. You know, just like, you know, uh, in, 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 that he's from Germany. I mean, he's throwing out all of these codes. He's from Germany, eugenics, sup the superior genes, all of these things. I mean, we can hear it, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, they're eating it up. They just, they love it, you know. And so so if, if, that's, if that's his heart, if he gets elected, 
then the people with the same heart that has no bottom are going to ride and die. Right. And they're going to execute whatever plan or try to execute whatever they plan they can against a certain group of people. Yeah. No, oh, by the way, I, it's, I think it's worth worth mentioning now that this this person, he can't, I, I, unless something's changed in the law, he can't even vote for himself. Can't even vote. All right. Now, on the flip side of that, we have someone, if, if they get in the office, that the people are going to be so upset about it that they're willing to still execute the same plan that they would have executed if their guy got in. Mm -hmm. So there's no circumstance by which they, they're not going to try to execute this plan against us. It's just not. There's no scenario for us other than a grand intervention by y'all to say, well, this ain't the time, this ain't the place, I'm going to do something crazy so, to divert your plan, which he could do that. I don't know how he's going to do it. But I'm just saying, from if, if we're depending upon, if our faith is in who we vote on, mm -hmm. my point is that our outcome is the same. Same. Yeah. 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 And we, we, we have to go into the booth with that mindset. Because they're, they're, you know, we're not voting for a savior. We're not voting for somebody who has all power in their hand. You know, we're not even voting for somebody who's good. <laughs> we're not. We're not. And so, you know, we 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 have to get back to depending upon y'all. What 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 do we need to do in this season to prepare us for what might happen? Because mm -hmm. we can't really say. I mean, if if y'all allow these same people, and I, and I know the time is up and the judgment and all that stuff, but if he allowed these same people to come over here and kill 200 million people, if he allowed these same people to put us on all of these torture, these torture instruments, so we're going we're gonna to pull them those instruments out, pick just some of those instruments. They had instruments where they would lay us down, man, and 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 just have a drop of water that just hit us on the forehead. Boom. 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 For weeks. Just imagine that. A, just a drop of water. Just it, it, they said it becomes like a pounding sound. It's just one drop of water. Who thinks of these torturous type things? Mm -hmm. That they, they would put you on these like a like a little horse or something with sharp instruments in between. So you just, and then they would put weights on you and, and just slowly watch you go down on those instruments. All of these instruments were up under the church. Mm. The French came in and they knew it was, I think it was another Hebrew. He knew that there was something going on and, and they were doing all these things out of the phase and all these things, but they couldn't find where the torture prisons were. And so I think the general came in, they were trying to figure out what, what all these, uh, you know, torture was going on. And, and the church folk just stand there like, you know, you know, it ain't nothing. It ain't nothing. Yeah, why y'all in here doing this? And before he left, the general told me, go get a bunch of water. And he said, I want you to just throw it on the floor of the church. Mm. And they took the water and they threw all the water on the floor of the church. And they watched where the water was flowing. And the water flowed and they noticed that there was an opening in the floor, the church floor. And the water went down in there and they said, that's the spot. They almost left. But he wanted to do this water test. He did the water test. When they opened up that opening, they said the look on them people's faces, uh, you know, just it's, it's, they found the place. They they were shook. They went down in there and they said the manner of torture up under the church. Yeah. Yeah. So what I'm saying, these are the descendants. And now they're trying to implement the authoritarian Christianity again. We're gonna force you. We're gonna we're gonna force you the Bible back in school, and you're gonna worship like we said you're gonna worship. Mm -hmm. You're gonna do it like we said you're gonna do it, just like they were doing back then. And I don't think that we see where we can go with this thing. Mm -hmm. And then we have on our side, we say, well, we're not our ancestors. 
But we it, are. We are. Our yeah. ancestors fought. Like when we were coming out of Jerusalem and we were there and, we, and, and then we were fighting against the Greek, trying to get back to Jerusalem. Man, we fought so hard, we killed over 200,000 Greeks. And then went back and took our last stand. We were fighters. But y'all allowed them to t eventually take us over. You know, we had so many ins insurrections over here in the U.S. that they don't talk about mm -hmm. because we were fighters. So, you know, it was cases where we took ships away from the people who who were bringing up his slave and then drove the ship back, back home. <laughs> I mean, we were fighters. So this idea that we were just some weak people, you know, and we not our ancestors really does injustice to how our ancestors fought because right. they did. So my point is, if we try to do these things in our own strength, we can not be our ancestors all day long. But if we try to do this on our own, we're going to lose. We're going to lose. No doubt. And that's the mentality that I'm saying we're, we're missing. Until we turn back to him and repent, we can brag about we're not our ancestors all we want because what we're saying is I'm strong enough to fight you back. I'm strong enough to beat you. When these people have manufacturing facilities to create weapons that we we don't have manufacturing facilities for bullets and guns. Right. We're limited. We could all buy a gun, but we're limited to the supply. So I said all that to say that we don't know what the bottom is. And we can't do this on our own. And we've got to understand that. Try to figure out what what are my expectations? Do they line up with with, with y'all? Where's my faith really lying? What do I really believe? Mm -hmm. Who am I really trusting? Am I mm -hmm. trusting myself? Am I trusting in the government? Am I, oh, where is my faith? That's so, all. Anyway, stop right there. No, that's the only thing. You can keep going. That's some, yeah, that's some good stuff. Good. <laughs> that's, that's some good stuff. I'm, 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 I'm pondering that scripture. I think it's in Isaiah where you asked the question, whose report are you going to believe? And, you know, so <clears throat> you, you think about all the election year rhetoric that takes place. You know, you, you think about, you know, you know, the promises of one side versus the promises of the other. And if we go back and look at the promises on both sides, we'll see that this, you know, you know, they've been saying that they've been offering the same promises year over year over year. You know, they're not really saying anything new. And so <clears throat> we 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 have to understand that as long as these promises have been made on either side, we see to the degree that they've been delivered and where we stand relative to those promises being delivered. So whose report are we going to believe? Whose report? That's the question. Mm -hmm. Who report? Yeah. So, you know, we get to the, you know, and and uh, I kind of sum it up, and we we get ready to sum it up. If you guys ready? But you know, we when we go, to, I think it's in Zechariah where he talks about the the four horsemen, and he really designates four what he called carpenters or horsemen or whatever. To spread us out over the whole world. Hmm. That meant that 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 I mean that is so powerful because he's telling us it was me. It was I allowed you to be dispersed all over the world. I, I allowed the forces of the heavens. I gave them the authority to spread you all over the world. And he said, no matter where you go, they're gonna find you. And this, he said that in the curses. So he sends those four horses out. And I'm telling you, no matter where we went, y'all, we even tried to go to, like, where the Philippines and all that is. Don't you know that the Spanish came over there, too? Everywhere we went, we, we were in India. The Portuguese came all the way around the Horn of Africa. 
and took the Jews of Cochin from Africa, I mean from India, and put them in the slave. Think about that. They went all around the coast finding a particular group of people and ended up in India and found the black Jews of India and took them into slavery or killed them. Because they were focusing on, on a particular group of people. No matter where we went, they found us. And so, so the, the most high, he, he fulfills his promise. This is what I'm going to do to you for you not listening. When you're not listening. I'm, I'm going to do this. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do this. And the, and the challenge becomes, okay, as I do this, are you going to have the faith of David and say, no matter where you send me to, in this earth, on the lower parts of the earth, are you going to believe that I'm not going to leave you there? Mm -hmm. You know, so some of you, <clears throat> I'm going to take you out, um, and this is going to be via death. <laughs> some of you, I'm going to take you out, and it's going to be it's going to be painful coming out, but I'm going to bring you out. Some of you, I'm going to bring you out. As a part of my judgment, because I'm, I'm, I'm going to go back and I'm going to deal with these nations who have done these things to you. Mm -hmm. and you're going to come out as a result. But no matter where I am, as I spank you, I'm going to one day embrace you. I'm going to love you. And I need you to remember, listen to what I'm saying and remember what I'm saying and know without a shadow of a doubt, I am not going to forget you. I'm not going to forget you. Amen to that. Something I say to my wife from time to time. And she, she now... Kind of echoes it, but it dawned on me some years ago that the Most High knows exactly what it will take to get each and every one of His people back to Him. He knows. If it, if it means death or the verge of death, if it means shaking you, if it means humbling you, if it means taking everything away from you, He knows what it will take to get every last one of us back to Him, and He will allow it. And he will allow it knowing that there ain't nothing, there's nothing that's going to separate us from his love. Mm -hmm. I no come. faith, no death, no nothing. He's going to find us. He's going to get us. So he'll he'll do it without even hesitating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I can remember my daughter. You know, she's a little, little girl, two years old, something like that. And she was over playing close to an electrical socket. And I slapped her hand. And I know it stung, you know, uh, she cried, but I really didn't care. M the majority of me didn't care that mm -hmm. she cried. I felt a little bad that she had to cry, but the majority of me didn't because I understood that what I was saving her from was more important than the temporary sting that she had on her hand. That's how the most high looks at us. Yes. Now, now this this is atrocious to us some of the things we're going through but the eternity and the promises that he has for us is just he's just slapping us on our hands all it is that's all it is and paul puts it like that he said you know for the troubles of this present time are not even worthy to be compared to the glory that shall be revealed and uh, so he's saying as atrocious as it is it's but a slap on the hand. Nothing, yeah. It's nothing compared to the promise that Yah has. And he knows what he has. And so he's slapping me on the hand to keep me from putting my hand in the electrical socket. I'm crying, and I'm talking about how awful it is. And he's saying, okay, but wait wait till you see the end result of it. Wait till you see what I was saving you from. Wait till you see what I was protecting you from. Then you appreciate it. And then when I say this, we'll get ready to get out of here. But the four, four horsemen that comes in the book of Revelation are there to shake Israel to its core. So that we begin to turn back to the truth and the living God. And that's what you're not going to get in the Eurocentric church. Mm -hmm. The purpose of those horses, the first four he sent out to spread us out all over the world to fulfill the curses. The next four he sends out to shake us so that he can bring us back into the prompts. Y'all see it? Mm. And so it, it's just so powerful. So then you see all these things start coming up on the earth as he, as he removes those seals. The four, four horsemen goes out, he removes those seals. And what happens at the end of those seals? 
all of a sudden you see the hundred and forty four thousand rise up. <laughs> yes, sir. The, the you know the beginning of 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 the ministry going out to all of Israel. But so it's a powerful, it's a powerful picture. But I just want to throw that in there before we got out of here. It is. I mean, it's it's, it's very powerful, and and that's. That's why Paul was able to say all things work together for the good of those who love the, the most high and are called or the called according to his purpose. All things. All things. That's crazy. No, no matter how, how it feels, it works together for our good. Works for our good, man. And he said so that we can be conformed to the image, to the image of his son. <laughs> Y'all got this. This is so good. And then, then he said, he said, because I, I, those who I, I foreknew, he mm. said, I predestined. Mm. And he said, those who I foreknew and predestined, them I call. And if I called you, he said, them I also. He's talking in the past mm. tense about things okay. that hadn't even happened. Them that I call, them I also justified. Them I justified, them have I also glorified. In the past, he's so confident in his work. He's talking to future people in the past tense. Mm -hmm. So confident, you know, so confident. You think about, you know, that concerning us. But he had that same confidence toward his own son who did nothing wrong. And he, he allowed him to experience death because he was confident that he was going to raise him again. <laughs> <laughs> And so we have to we have to somehow muster up that same confidence, you know. And, and so, and if we if we don't, if I don't, you know, take the appropriate amount of time to really understand what he has said, and also make sure that what I think I'm hearing aligns with his point of view, then uh, I'm not going to have that confidence. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to you know see trouble coming on the horizon. And I'm going to be trying to find a, an off ramp somewhere to to get around it, yeah. and, and and there's no way if if we want to truly be conformed, if I want to truly be conformed to the image of His dear Son, I I, I can't be taking off ramps. Can't be taking off ramps because what then what I'm saying is my way, mm. <laughs> my way is better than yours. Than yours, my thoughts are higher than his. Right. Yeah. Right. Now it sounds a little bit like the five I wills. Yeah. Hey, yes. Yes, sir. Exactly. Yes, sir. All you know, um, um, I almost feel like we got to do something, fellas, because they're not going to be mad at us. No, don't you read nothing. We ain't read nothing. Don't we ain't, read read nothing. We ain't <laughs> cracked the whole book. <laughs> D-Mac, forgive us, man. No, but no you said you got the antiquities of Josephus. <laughs> Those things are like five weeks long. <laughs> so, 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 you know, uh, you know, I, I just feel like, you know, you know, in you know, we, we're gonna what we'll do, we'll go ahead and uh, and just in our own our own time. We'll, we'll, we'll... Shout out to D Mac. <laughs> you gonna come back next week and say, "Man, I can't be y'all alone for nothing." You know what? I'm actually I started listening to Enoch. Um, uh, what's today? Today's today's Wednesday. Mm -hmm. Started listening to Enoch a couple of days ago. So shout out to D, D Mac. It's all right. I got I got to get cranked up on Enoch too and send everybody the email to uh, start uh, start study. So we can do that on Shabbat. Yes, sir. All righty then, man. It's, it's good, good conversation. Um, Absolutely. So we're gonna go ahead and uh, get out of here. We'll, you know, continue to pray for uh, you know uh, all of the elective yard that's in Florida. Absolutely. And uh, you know, we we've got a special prayer request from the class. So let's make sure we lift up everybody in there that we we discussed. But yeah, this is uh. You know, and and that, and also when we pray, pray that we begin to understand why. It's right. Happening. Right. Yes, yeah, sir. Right. Yeah. You know, we we we've talked about this. You know, I think uh, we touched on this a few weeks in a row, uh, a few weeks now, a few times rather. You know that all these things are happening. You know that we call natural disasters are happening to get our attention. We 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 can't lose sight of it. So I really appreciate you. You know you you know calling that out, Kendall. That when you know, we we got to ask why. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have to ask why. You know, I mean, you know, that that doesn't mean that the natural emotions that are associated with 
you know, these natural disasters, you know, depending on how close or far away we are. That doesn't mean that they, they won't exist, but we have to understand that these things serve a purpose. And in, in, in life here on earth, you know, the Most High has a point of view that is centered on us, and we've got to be asking him why are you allowing these things to happen the way that you're allowing them to happen in, 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 in today's day and age, happening at more frequency and more intensity. Yeah. Yeah, to the even to the point, and we'll get out of here to the way he says that people are gonna start mocking us. Yeah, yeah. Where is he? Where is the hope? Are you, well, you know, uh, you know, y'all been saying this stuff for years. Yeah. Where is he? Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah. All right. Well, we'll stop right there. I go another thirty. And is that is our third? Is our second closing the third? Yes, it's <laughs> our third at least. You know, I lost count. We can't be, be good Hebrews if we don't have at least three closings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, fellas. Well, we're going to go ahead and get out of here before right. we have another one. So, All, right. All right. Shalom. Shalom. In a shocking 1700s historical document of black Americans, a German professor used the term Negro as a reference to black Jews both in Africa and in Portugal. The author also makes a clear distinction between the black Jews and black Moors. The Moors were largely a distinctly different mixture of black people, most of whom had converted to the Muslim faith. The author candidly points out that the black Jews were specifically targeted for the slave trade, and that the black Moors were intentionally avoided, and that the Negroes also known as black Jews were then sent to the Americas during the slave trade. Get your e-book and audiobook bundle today. Choose from the following three options. Option 1. Get free copies of the original 1700s documents only. Option 2. Get an easy to read edited ebook, plus free copies of the original 1700s document for a low price of $10. Option 3. Get an audiobook for easy listening, plus the easy to read edited ebook, and also free copies of the original 1700s document for a low bundle price of $15. Learn the real history they don't want you to know.